Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, uh, GSA 101. Uh, we're so glad to have you here. Um, we're just going to give folks a, a couple more minutes to, to pour in. But um, in the meantime, um, we'll introduce ourselves in just a moment. But uh, my name is Nick. I'm the executive director of GSA. And feel free to pop into the chat and uh, say hi to the folks who are here. Maybe let us know your name and what county you're coming from. Uh, so that we learn a little bit more about you and that you all get to see uh, each other and who all is here. All right, and while you're doing that, I will go ahead and launch a poll as well. Um, just again, I'll learn a little bit more about you and who you are. Hi, Alexa from Franklin County. Um, so uh, in this poll, uh, just curious to know who you are, what your story is, if you're a student, a parent, um, what art form you're interested in. And uh, yeah, feel free to keep uh, jumping in the chat to say hi to folks. Let us know your first name and your county uh, in the chat. It's good to see you, Abby from Oldham County. It's actually where I'm from as well. Hi, Jesse. Hi, hi, Allison. All right, Allison's representing McCracken County in the West. Jennifer, hey, Mason. Emily, Kate, hello. Hello, Adu. Awesome. So we got someone representing McCracken County in the far west, and we got Samantha representing Pike County. We have the entirety of the state represented from far east to far west. I love it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share the results of the poll. So it looks like a majority of folks who are joining us today are students who are currently eligible to apply to GSA. That's awesome. Way to be ambitious and take your GSA application information into your own hands. And glad to have a few parents here as well uh, today. Thank you all for supporting your children's creative endeavors. And it looks like a lot of our art forms are uh, of interest to you all today. Uh, it looks like we might have a lot of musicians here today, which is pretty cool, and a lot of visual artists. So um, thanks for sharing. And uh, like I said, feel free to keep popping in the chat, say hi to each other, um, interact with each other there. Uh, we know we're on Zoom, but we want you all to feel connected to each other as well um, during today's presentation. So first off, just some quick introductions. Uh, again, my name is Nick Koval. I'm the Executive Director of the Governor's School for the Arts. I'm also a 2002 alum of our vocal music program. Um, so I love getting to work for the program that changed my life. And one of my favorite parts of my job are the amazing people I work with. Um, so I'm really uh, privileged today to be joined by two of those colleagues um, who I'll let introduce themselves. So I'll start by introducing um, Jessica, our program manager. Hi, folks. I'm so excited to have you with us today. Again, my name is Jessica Graham. I am the GSA program manager, and I am from Muhlenberg County. So hi, Willow. It's good to see another Muhlenberg County person here. Um, I attended uh, GSA in 2007 for drama. So excited to answer all of your fun questions. And um, yeah, so excited to be here. Awesome. Thanks, Jess. And also joining us today, our alumni coordinator, Dean Allen Muir. Hey, Dean. Hey, Nick, and hi, everybody. As Nick said, my name is Dean Allen Muir. I am the alumni coordinator here at GSA. I'm also a 2005 musical theater uh, alumni, so sending out all those positive vibes to everybody and echoing Jessica as well. I'm here to answer any questions you have and just make sure that you feel comfortable and supported to really put your best foot forward with your application. So don't be afraid to reach out to us. We're all here to help and so excited that you're here. Awesome. Thanks, Dean. Uh, and Dean and Jessica will be um, monitoring the Q&A during today's presentation. So uh, if you're joining us, especially on a tablet or a computer, you should be able to see a Q&A feature in addition to the chat feature. So as we go on today, please uh, go through today's presentation. Please feel free to submit your questions in that Q&A feature. It'll be easier for us to capture it there. Uh, respond to it there rather than in the the chat um but dean and jessica will be answering questions as we go along but we will also take some time for q a at the end so if you don't have any questions till the end no worries we'll take them then also we have a, a fourth colleague who's not uh, here with us today her name is paula lockhart and she's our associate director so if you call us at some point you may um or email us you may interact with paula but hopefully you've seen from from jessica and dean and myself that um, you know, over here at GSA, 
Uh, you've got folks who are really excited to support you uh, in your application process to help you be the best uh, applicant you can be. And partially that's just because we already know that you're awesome. Um, you are a young artist. Uh, you are ambitious just by virtue of being in this uh, presentation today or watching a recording afterward. Um, so we're already on your side cheering you on and it's our pleasure to work with you and support you. So without further ado, I'm going to um, go ahead and share my screen and we will continue through today's presentation. All right. So once again, um, my name is Nick. I'm the executive director of GSA and we are thrilled to have you here at GSA 101 today. Uh, in this presentation, we're gonna review what Kentucky's Governor's School for the Arts or GSA as we call it, is all about. So we're gonna discuss what types of students we're looking for and provide an overview of the application process. Um, we have been uh, having a series of virtual information sessions throughout the fall. This is actually our last one this season. Um, so there are recordings of those available on our website. We are recording today, just so you know. Um, so uh, that will be uh, provided on the recording we provided on our website after today's session. We're also uh, live streaming on Facebook. So we'll be looking out for questions there if you're watching us on Facebook. And like I said, we'll have time for Q&A at the end. But if you have questions as the presentation is going on, please feel free to use that Q&A feature. If you're attending this uh, presentation today in real time via Zoom, you should receive a survey after the presentation is over. Please complete that. It really helps us um, understand who we're reaching with our recruitment efforts and how we can uh, do better with them. First things first, what is GSA? Well, put simply, the Governor's School for the Arts is a community of artists that empowers Kentucky's next generation of creative leaders. And the primary way that we accomplish that, and the reason you're likely watching today, is GSA's summer program. So GSA's summer program is a three-week residential program for high school age artists that takes place on a college campus. Students are immersed in an intense, challenging, and exhilarating learning environment in one of nine art forms. And while each student focuses on the one art form that they are attending GSA for, Interdisciplinary collaboration is a major component of the program. So you are gonna be applying for a specific art form and if you get into GSA, you're gonna attend for that specific art form. But when you're there, you do have chances to uh, be exposed to and engage with art forms other than your own. As I mentioned, we have nine core art forms. So we've got those listed here. Uh, we've got our architecture and design program, uh, which is not just about architecture. If, you, if uh, you're thinking just about designing houses, uh, our architecture and design program goes far beyond that. It really provides a first year like college level studio experience to um, that's relevant to a lot of the different design fields. We have a creative writing program, our dance program, and our dance program uh, really has four pillars in it, ballet, modern, uh, choreography or composition, and dances of the African diaspora, although you do not have to have experience in all four of those areas by any means um, to apply. Um, drama, film and photography, so those are bundled together in the same art form. Instrumental music, and that's any instruments. Uh, we have a chamber music based instrumental music program. Uh, it's not an orchestra or a band per se, um, so any instruments are welcome. Musical theater, visual art, and that ranges from drawing, painting, ceramic, sculpture, sculpture, printmaking. Um, although again, you certainly don't have to have had experience in all of those necessarily to apply. And then vocal music, and our vocal music program is a little more classically based compared to our musical theater program. Vocal music is also where our choir program lives. So if you are um, a self-described choir nerd like myself, uh, that vocal music program might be one that you're interested in. In terms of class size, because it's a pretty popular question we get, um, the largest art form is instrumental music. So not all art forms are the same size. We do our best to uh, create class sizes related to the number of applicants we tend to see in art forms. So you know we do our best to basically make sure the acceptance ratio across art forms is as similar as possible. Uh, the largest art form is instrumental music. That's going to have nearly 50 student spots um, at each GSA session. And visual arts is going to be the next largest, with about 40 student positions anticipated at each session. The smaller art forms are going to be architecture and design. It's going to have 16 students probably. And film and photography will probably have a total of 16 students per session. Um, most other art forms that I didn't mention tend to have a class size in the upper 20s or the lower 30s per session. 
Uh, so you've been hearing me say per session, and there are indeed going to be two sessions of GSA summer program. This is a really big deal for us. This is uh, relatively new to GSA. Uh, just last year, this past summer, we had our first expanded summer of two sessions, and that's thanks to expansion funding that we've received from the Kentucky Department of Education. Um, so all art forms will take place at both sessions, except for architecture and design, which only takes place during the first session, and dance um which will host about 40 students at the second session only um so again those class sizes are still a little bit in flux so keep those uh, keep in mind those numbers might shift slightly um and students do attend only one session so we have one student body in the first session and another student body in the second session best of all one of my favorite facts about gsa is that all of this is provided at no cost to the students so gsa does not charge tuition room or board or any other fees for attending the program we're actually uh, very, very rare in that um, across the country. Uh, increasingly, you see more tuition-based uh, models or programs like ours. We are very proud to still be tuition-free. And that's been an important part of our mission since we were founded all the way back in 1987, just celebrated our 35th anniversary. And we were founded and continue to be um, a partnership between the Commonwealth of Kentucky and Kentucky Performing Arts, which is a nonprofit in Louisville with a statewide mission. Some of you might know that organization formerly by its former name uh, as the Kentucky Center for the Performing Arts. So before we dive further into what the summer program like, it looks like, let's talk a little bit about GSE's values. What do we believe in and what is important to us? So first of all, we believe that artists are vitally important to society. And if you are passionate about your art form, that means you. You are important and you are an artist. And artists make vital contributions to society. They innovate, problem solve, and inspire. Artists spark empathy, joy, social dialogue, and human connection. And GSA's role is to connect young artists to things like affirmation, empowerment, resources, and quality educational opportunities toward a future where they can be the best version of their creative selves. And we know behind every artist is a network of support from educators, mentors, family, and friends. So if you're watching today as a guardian, a teacher, or just a cheerleader for a young artist, we're here for you too. Your support and mentorship of young artists is vitally important. So thank you for being an arts hero as you are. In all things at GSA, you can expect to encounter the following values. GSA is uplifting. We believe each of us is capable and deserving of a bright and abundant future. GSA is open and communicative. We, we celebrate the differences between us and seek out the commonalities that we might not have realized we share. GSA is community. You may remember that we refer to ourselves as a community of artists. We live, learn, and grow together as many individuals contributing to something greater than the sum of our parts. GSA is trust and integrity, because without accountability and honoring our commitments to each other, we can't access the next three values, authenticity, vulnerability, and resilience. At GSA, we dare to be our true and our best selves, embracing our quirks, growing and learning together, and courageously sharing our unique voices with the world and celebrating each person's worth. GSA is also about Kentucky love. With students coming from all corners of the Commonwealth, we discover the cultural richness of our state and develop roles in creating the future we want for our home. And of course, GSA is about creativity and innovation. After all, we are artists. We flip the script, we pivot, we design a brighter tomorrow, and we bring color to everyday life. So that's who we are, but what kind of students are we seeking to join the GSA summer program? First off, let's talk about eligibility um, and age, or grade at least. To be eligible to apply for next summer's program, uh, you must currently be a high school sophomore or a junior in Kentucky. Uh, if you're not quite old enough to apply for GSA, keep watching this video uh, because you can definitely start preparing yourself to be a competitive GSA applicant years in advance. Maybe some of you watching today have been doing that. It may come as no surprise that GSA is also looking for students who exhibit skill on their art form. We want to ensure that every GSA student is up to the challenge of an intense three-week experience in their artistic discipline. However, don't be discouraged if you feel like you haven't received a lot of formal training in your art form, or if you feel like you don't measure up to other young artists in the state for one reason or another. Uh, just as much as we're looking for proven artistic skill, we are also looking for artistic potential. Plus, the only way you can guarantee you won't get into GSA is by not applying. Uh, the application process, process is designed to help you prepare for future opportunities like college applications. So it's a learning experience no matter what. 
And remember, everyone at GSA, including the adjudicators who score your application, are cheering you on. We want you to do well, and we recognize the ambition and courage it takes to submit your application. So go for it. Put yourself out there. Equally as important, we're looking for students who are passionate about their art form. We aren't just interested in what you create, but why you create it. So I encourage you to think about what you want to accomplish through your creativity. Do you want to make other people smile? Do you want to spark change? At GSA Summer Program, we live, breathe, and eat art. So we're really looking for students who exhibit the level of passion and motivation it takes to dive into an opportunity like this one. We're also looking for students who exhibit an ability to collaborate with an open mind. GSA Summer Program is a diverse group of Kentuckians of different identities, perspectives, and walks of life. Students are expected to not only live with people different from themselves, but to learn from them and create with them. And together we co-create a powerful community that is larger than, but dependent upon our individual contributions. And of course, we're looking for students who are eager to learn. GSA is designed to challenge you, to present you with new methods, ideas, and concepts. So we're looking for students who are excited to keep growing. We know sometimes it can feel uncomfortable to be challenged, but that's where the trust and support of GSA come into play. To play, We are all learning and growing together. And again, it's worth emphasizing that GSA seeks and welcomes applicants of all backgrounds and identities. So this means we're interested in hearing from young artists from across the continuum of and at the intersection of things like race, gender identity, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, hometown setting, mental or physical health or ability, language, religious belief, political leaning, or cultural background. Translations of our materials are available upon request. And while the GSA application is online, students without access to reliable internet can contact us via phone to discuss how we can accommodate their application regardless. All in all, our goal here is to seek a student body that represents the richly diverse life experiences and perspectives of Kentucky, because a really profound way to grow is for all of us to learn from people who are different than ourselves and for us to teach people who are different than ourselves as well. It's a two-way street. All right, so let's dig a little bit more into the summer program. What's it look like? How will you spend your time? Do you actually have to do your own laundry? So on the first day of the program, um, students move into their residential hall. Like I said, it's a residential program. You live on a college campus and uh, everyone attends an opening ceremony with their guardians. Then it's time to say goodbye to your family for three entire weeks. Uh, because once guardians leave campus on opening day, there's no visitation for the entire duration of the program. Um, so for some of you, I don't know, that might be really exciting news. That might sound cool. For others of you, that might sound a little scary to be away from home that long. But either way, that's valid. And know that throughout GSA, you will be surrounded by a compassionate residential life staff, faculty, and a mental health counselor uh, to help any of us cope with any stress or homesickness that we might feel. Uh, one, one thing to note is that students are not allowed to have their cell phones outside of their, uh, their dorm hallway. I'll just say that one more time. We uh, disconnect to connect at GSA and uh, we actually don't take our cell phones out of our dorm hallway, which means you spend most of your day without your cell phone. But you can always call your family and friends at the end or the beginning of the day. And students are always near an adult who has a phone. Um, so there are phones nearby in case of emergency. Um, and if there is an emergency, we'll definitely connect students with their parents, but we do not have our smart, students don't have their smartphones during class. All right, so on the second day of the program, we really hit the ground running. Each day begins with a provided breakfast, followed by a morning session that is attended by the entire school. So these morning sessions include everything from performances to presentations and Q and A's with artists from a variety of fields and careers. So it's a great way to learn about other art forms and you might even discover careers in the arts that you never knew existed. Then it's off to class or as we call it GSA, studio time. So studio time can consist of many different activities that vary based on your art form of focus. So studio can mean you're in a class, maybe a workshop, a rehearsal, a demonstration, maybe you're on a field trip. Um, you might have independent work time or a group project or more. Uh, you receive, either way, you receive personalized training from a variety of experts in your field. And uh, hopefully in the process, you're developing mentorships that last a lifetime. After three hours of morning studio, we break for lunch. The afternoon consists of a four hour studio period before heading to dinner. Then in the evening, you guessed it, we head back to studio um, on some nights at least. Other evenings uh, consist of an all school assembly in the evening. 
uh, that features a performance or presentation that's may, maybe more fully produced than the morning session. And either way, um, students are either are usually pretty occupied until 10 p.m. when we finally return to the residential hall. So at that point, students can hit the hay or socialize, um, but lights are out pretty soon thereafter. So again, uh, just looking at this schedule, it's important to emphasize days at GSA are longer than normal school days and they can be rigorous. So that's part of the intensive nature of the program. While GSA Studio takes place seven days a week, we do start one hour later on Saturdays and students have free time on Sundays until afternoon studio. Uh, however, depending on program needs, students might have to do activities before studio on the weekends. On Sundays, uh, transportation to nearby houses of worship can be arranged for students by GSA staff. And there's only two days during the program where we don't have studio at all. Uh, one of those is typically an all school event, such as a field trip uh, or, and a college fair. And the other day is geared more towards rest and activities planned by the residential life staff. Speaking of the residential life staff, let's talk about residential life at GSA. So each student is assigned to a residential advisor, or we call them RAs for short. So you can sort of think of an RA as your GSA mom or dad. Uh, they also live in the dorm and they serve as mentors who support your ability to have a successful and fun GSA experience. Each student is a member of the RA's group, which consists of other GSA students from different art forms in various parts of the state. So you sort of have this core uh, kind of family uh, unit in, in the dorm side, um, just because we know it's important to have other folks to connect with um, in a new environment like this one. So yeah, you can think of your other students in your RA group as sort of your GSA siblings. Uh, while you can certainly spend plenty of time socializing outside your RA group, they're a cohort of fellow young artists who you will have a regular communication and bonding time with. GSA students tend to develop friendships at the program that lasts a lifetime. I'm willing to bet that Justine and I, all three as alums, um, could talk to you about many friendships that we have um, still as adults that, that started at GSA. Um, and, you know, I think part of that is just because when we're at home uh, outside of GSA, being an artist can often be what sets us apart from others. But it's, at GSA, it's what we all have in common is our love of the art. So that can create a really special type of bond. Even though so much of GSA is spent in studio, RAs do organize a great variety of fun activities for students outside of the class time. Uh, dorm life is really awesome at GSA. So that can include everything from exercise and sports groups to coffee house, which is GSA's version of a talent show. We've got a spirit week. We do crafts, uh, maybe some skill building groups. And uh, like we said, RAs uh, or, uh, organize a, a free day that um, can be more of like a, like a field day of sorts. In the past, we've had a cookie decorating, a spike ball tournament, a volleyball tournament. We have a school dance. Um, and again, those are optional activities. You can participate if you want. You can also just chill out in your room and get some rest. In terms of our host campus, GSA currently takes place on the beautiful campus of the University of Kentucky in Lexington. Um, students live in a dorm called Holmes Hall, H-O-L-M-E-S Hall. And that's UK's Fine Arts Residential Hall, um, and it's a really cool space. It doesn't only it not only features uh, state of the art student living spaces, but it also has a dance studio, a writing lab, an art studio, and practice rooms. Each GSA student is assigned a roommate from a different art form in a different county. Again, exchange and meeting people from different art forms, different parts of the state. It's a very important part of the program. Uh, and with that roommate, you share a two bedroom suite. So that means each student shares a bathroom and living space with one other person, their roommate, but each student has their own individual bedroom. If you're really interested in what the dorm life will look like or the dorm layout, room layouts for Holmes Hall are available on the University of Kentucky's website. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, floors are assigned by gender. And we do work with non-binary and transgender students to ensure that they have a customized housing situation that's comfortable for them. So um, non-binary and trans transgender students are welcome to reach out to us um, in advance of the program if they're accepted um, to talk about um, what housing can look like for them. Beyond Holmes Hall, students experience a wide array of stunning facilities at UK, uh, everything from having our meals in Champions Kitchen, which is in the pretty new student center, um, as well as the School of Arts and Visual Studies, the Singletary Center for the Arts, the Fine Arts Building, Schmidt Vogel Arts Center. And uh, throughout all that time on campus, uh, you know, we do remain accountable to our fellow community members and showing respect to them and to ourselves. So students are held to a high uh, code of conduct, uh, conduct during the program that's agreed upon prior to the summer program. So we send that out in advance. 
Oh, and yes, going back to my comment from earlier, you do have to do your own laundry. So that is one example of how GSA is a great lesson in independence and self-sufficiency. Both of those sessions I mentioned this summer will take place on the UK's campus, by the way. And on the final day of the program, family and friends are invited back on campus. And this is a really cool day. It's a, a day of creative celebration. So all students will showcase their work in some fashion. Uh, the day is full of performances, readings, and gallery exhibitions. And it concludes with a graduation ceremony before everyone heads home, maybe after some teary hugs, goodbye. Um, and we all get some well-deserved rest. One of my favorite things about GSA, though, is that the experience does not end after the summer program. It really just begins. Um, we really seek to have a lifelong commitment to our alumni, uh, supporting them toward a, uh, toward a quality and accessible college experience, first off, and championing them as creative citizens for decades to come. GSA alumni receive scholarships to nearly 30 colleges and universities across the country. So a full listing of those scholarships is available on our website under the alumni section. So be, be sure to check those out. Uh, GSA alumni also received significant college and career coaching by way of a college fair that we host during the summer program, um, which is uh, also we host an event in the fall called College and Career Day, which is an exclusive opportunity to meet with college reps um, and audition or review your portfolio with a bunch of them at once. Of course, there are continued mentorships to GSA faculty and staff. And alumni are also eligible to apply for GSA's Toyota Alumni Fund, which provides $10,000 a year in grant funding to support artistic uh, alumni artistic development. Uh, of course, students are connected to nearly um, 7,000 other GSA alumni. Uh, I think that's one of the greatest benefits of being an alum. It's an amazing network. Um, so you're connected in with these uh, 7,000 plus other folks who are creating exciting work in a variety of fields across the globe. So hopefully by now you are on the edge of your seat saying to yourself, GSA sounds like the perfect program for me. How can I apply? And you are in the right place. Let's chat about it. Let's talk about the GSA application process and what it looks like. So first off, some big picture highlights uh, of the application review process. So every applicant must complete an online application to be considered for GSA 2023. As we mentioned earlier, students without reliable internet access are encouraged to contact us via phone about any accommodations. The entire application process for GSA from start to finish includes two rounds. So that first round is completely virtual. Every student who submits an application will be considered in that first virtual round. Then some applicants are invited to participate in a second and final round of auditions and reviews. And that gives them the designation of being a GSA finalist. So the final GSA class is selected from those GSA finalists. Um, uh, and so again, you, everyone applies on the online application. Some folks advance to the final round. And then from the final round, we select the GSA class. Throughout the entire process, uh, we're not going to ever ask you for your GPA, SAT, or ACT scores. We know those are com commonly used indicators of student success, but we seek out other indicators for your fit for the GSA program. Students can apply for up to two art forms. We know many of you are multidisciplinary, that's awesome. Instrumentalists, I know there's some of you watching today, you can apply on two different instruments if you want, but that will count as your two art forms. And so you'll not be able to submit a third application. There is a $30 application fee that's collected just before submitting your application. And that fee increases to $35 total if you apply for two art forms. Um, but for students who are on free reduced lunch, that fee is completely waived by the click of a button in the application, no questions asked. While we do seek a diverse student body from across the entire state, there are no demographic acceptance quotas for GSA. So what that means is, you know, we don't accept a certain number of students from each county or from each high school, nor do we, nor do we seek specific quotas for things like gender or race, age or grade. Uh, in lieu of quotas, we you know, review each applicant in context of their artistic abilities, their potential, their access to resources, and the identities and perspectives that they have to offer. And ultimately, we choose a GSA class that's prepared for the summer program, but also represents a vast array of Kentuckian experiences. You might be aware that GSA is one of three awesome governor school programs in Kentucky, the other two being the Governor Scholars Program, GSP, and the Governor School for Entrepreneurs. So both GSP and GSE are awesome programs. Uh, and while all three of our programs are residential summer programs for talented high schoolers, 
our application processes are all very different. So we just want to point that out. A lot of people are especially familiar with GSP's application process uh, because it significantly relies on the involvement of a student's high school. And just take note that overall, GSA's application process has less formal involvement from an applicant's school, applicant school than GSP's does. So a student can really apply for GSA without any kind of approval from their school. Um, schools do not nominate students for GSA. And while we do encourage students to consult with their teachers and counselors during the application process, uh, it's possible that their role in the application will be limited to the recommendation forms. We'll discuss those more in just a bit. So everything you need to know about GSA, including the link to the application, is going to be found on our website. That's KentuckyGSA.org. Um, note that our website is embedded within the larger site for Kentucky Performing Arts. That's that organization I mentioned earlier. That's our parent organization. Um, and Kentucky Performing Arts manages performing arts spaces in Louisville. So if you click around our website and you actually end up on a page about a Broadway musical or a comedian who's coming to, to town or something like that, um, just go back to the previous page or go back to our homepage uh, using the URL KentuckyGSA.org. On our website, you're going to find a very important document for your art form called the Applicant Guide. There are nine applicant guides in total, one for each art form, and we really can't emphasize this next point enough. Read the Applicant Guide for your art form in full before you start your application and consult it often throughout your application process. So read the Applicant Guide. Um, if you are watching this webinar today and you haven't read your applicant guide, that's cool. It's not a problem, but know that maybe some of the lingering questions that you have about your art form's um, application and uh, what it's like to attend that art form might be answered in that applicant guide. So that really will be your one-stop shop, the applicant guide for everything you're going to need in the application process. It's going to include a description of your art form's curriculum during the summer program. Uh, the applicant guide has an overview of what you need to submit in the online application, an overview of what will be asked of you in advance, um, what, excuse me, an overview of uh, what you're asked to do in the final round if you do uh, proceed to the final round, uh, as well as the criteria that your application will be scored on. On the applicant guide, we also have a list of tips from adjudicators. Um, and if you have any lingering questions after reading the applicant guide, by all means, um, reach out to us. Um, we have some other uh, resources on our website as well. Um, but uh, let us know if you have questions. Give us a call or shoot us an email and we'll put that contact information up um, at the end of the presentation. We also have a really great uh, applicant walk application walkthrough video that's linked on our website where um, Jess actually hosts that. She did an amazing job with it. We actually show you what it's like to complete an application. So if you're a visual learner and you like to see what a process is going to look like before you go through it, um, check out that application walkthrough video to learn a little bit more about um, what the actual application portal looks like. So a few other things that you're going to find in that application, um, the applicant guide. Um, first off, the application has been open since October 6th. It's due January 8th. Um, I know that January 8th is over a month from now, um, but if you have not started your GSA application yet, I challenge you to start it in the next uh, two days, uh, just because um, you will need some time to complete it by that January 8th deadline. So this is not an application to start a day or two before that deadline. You can, uh, just so you know, start and stop your application as you please, saving your work along the way. So that's another great reason to start it now. When you click on the Apply Now button on GSA's website, um, or you can also, I think, link to it through the Applicant Guide, uh, you will be moved to GSA's application portal, which is a separate site called Accepted. So you'll create a profile with Accepted, um, and then you'll proceed with your application. Uh, while the GSA team is always here to answer your questions about the application, Accepted does have their own technology support team that you can contact if you experience technology glitches. Um, and a quick note too about Accepted, that is not a misspelling on here. Uh, the final E in the word is omitted in the application platform's name. Accepted, if you don't know, is also used for applications at a variety of collegiate art programs as well. So this might not be the last time uh, you end up using your Accepted account. So students will be asked for some basic demographic and contact information in their application on Accepted, and then they'll be asked to identify two recommenders. Applicants provide contact information for each recommender, and then Accepted emails each recommender an online form to fill out. So you never have to submit a letter of recommendation or turn anything in on behalf of your recommenders. 
we strongly recommend that you complete this part of the application process as early as possible so your recommenders have time to complete the form, the recommendation form, before the January 8th deadline. Both recommenders will complete the same form uh, in, in which we'll ask them about your artistic abilities and potential, how you contribute to your learning environment and or community, and your overall character and fit for GSA. So if you have mentors or teachers who know your artistic work, they're probably the best people to complete these forms, someone who knows you as an artist. If you don't have that person, because we you know some students maybe are really into you know, singing, but maybe don't have a choir teacher or something like that. Um, if you don't have that person, no worries. Just choose someone who knows you as a student or a contributing member of a group or organization, like a club, a youth group, or a sports team. Your recommenders can be teachers from inside of school or outside of school. They can be mentors, community leaders, school administrators. Really, their job title doesn't matter as much as their ability to speak to your strengths matter. So um, be sure to contact those recommenders in advance of filling out the application to let them know that they should be on the lookout for the recommendation forms in their inbox. And also, when you reach out to uh, ask them to be a recommender, uh, do yourself a favor and tell them why you think they should give you a glowing recommendation. Uh, advocate for yourself. Beyond the recommendations, um, students in online art forms respond to two essay prompts. So one of those is going to be a written response, and the other is a verbal response. So you'll actually video yourself verbally responding. You can just use your smartphone in your living room if you want. You don't have to hire a video production team or anything. Um, students will also respond to some art form specific questions about their experience and their interest in their area. And from there, students are prompted to submit images, videos, and documents specific to the art form's requirements. So again, all that's going to be in the applicant guide. Carefully review that to figure out what's required for your specific art forms of interest. Um, for some art forms, it's going to be one or two uploads. For others, you're going to need to create multiple short videos. So give yourself plenty of time to gather your materials or reading the applicant guide as soon as possible. Uh, and again, remember, we're really excited to see your artwork and review, review your application. We know it can be intimidating to submit your work for scoring and judging but know that we want you to do well and we will be impressed with the ambition, discipline, and courage you've experienced, you've exhibited simply by submitting an application in the first place. All right, so uh, we're just gonna look uh, over the timeline of this fall. Uh, clearly we're at the end of it, but um, like I've, I've mentioned, we're, uh, we've been doing a, these webinar series all fall long. Um, so you can see up here that we've had uh, these GSA 101 webinars this is our fourth and final one for the year. So thanks for joining us. Uh, and then on October 6th, the application opened and the applicant guides were released. The application walkthrough video was released. So you can go ahead and check that out if you haven't. I do want to point out that in October and in November, if you weren't aware, we did art form specific webinars. So these were where we sat down with an adjudicator in each individual art form and talked to them about what it's like to attend GSA for that art form, what they're looking for in applications for that art form. So if you are specifically interested in an art form or two, check those out if you haven't already. Again, the recordings of those are linked from our website, they're on our YouTube page. They're a really awesome resource to hear straight from the folks who will be reviewing your applications. And remember though, these webinars are not the only way to get uh, in touch with us or answer your questions. You can always email or call us. Beyond then, um, as I mentioned, the 2023 application is due by the end of the day, January 8th. Pro tip, note that that is a Sunday and the GSA office is not staffed on weekends. So January 6th is gonna be the last day to call and email us with questions. However, do not wait until then um, uh, to upload your application and think if you have any questions, we'll be standing by, but we may have a higher traffic on the phone lines that day. And the application system will inherently run slower uh, the closer you get to January 8th, as more people submit their applications in the final day or two. So do yourself a favor. Um, don't uh, subject yourself to sitting in front of a, um, a video file that's taking a long time to upload on January uh, 7th or 8th. Uh, get those applications in nice and early. On February 17th is when students will learn if they've advanced to that second and final round which is about one month before final round auditions and reviews. So those are gonna take place on March 17th and 18th. GSA's final round auditions will be hybrid. So that means that some auditions and reviews are gonna take place in person. And those that do take place in, per in person will be at the University of Kentucky in Lexington. And some will take place online via Zoom. So you read that, read your applicant guide to understand whether your art form's final round will be in person or virtual. 
on April 14th. It's the big announcement. We announced the GSA class of 2023, as well as any alternates who are placed on a wait list. Um, students also learn uh, which GSA session that they have been assigned to. So we do our best to uh, ask you if you have a session preference. We do our best to assign you based on that session preference. Um, however, it is just a preference, and we are not always able to assign students to the session that they prefer. You see up there, June and July, that's when GSA sessions are. I can give you those exact dates verbally right now. Our first session will be June 11th to July 1st. Again, that first session is June 11th to July 1st. Keep in mind, um, that's a session where we have architecture and design, but not dance, and all of the art forms are there. And then that second session, uh, July 9th through July 29th. So session two, July 9th through July 29th. And again, no architecture and design of that session, but we do have dance in the second session on all other art forms by both sessions. Okay, so we're kind of coming to our closing few slides here. Uh, what else can you be doing right now to prepare yourself to apply for GSA? Well, hopefully these final tips are fun, fun ones for you. We really encourage you just to dive into your art form every chance you can. And that's that can look like taking a class, practicing or sketching or writing at home, or even just researching uh, the work of other artists online. Really learn and experience as much as you can. And listen, that can include watching things on YouTube. Uh, form opinions about what you see and what you learn. Why do you like or not like a piece? How do you see GSA's criteria in the work of other artists? Who are some artists that you admire? Second, reflect on why you like engaging in the arts and what kind of artists you want to be. Uh, there are no wrong answers to that. What's your personal vision for that? And then do your best to get comfortable talking to other people about that, talking to other people about your artistry, your creative interests, your passion for the arts. Listen, we totally understand it can sometimes be uncomfortable to talk about yourself as an artist, but you've got nothing to lose. Uh, we encourage you to chat with your family, your friends about your art form, your dreams for your artistic future and how you want to grow. Maybe even ask them about their creative interests as well. It's a great way to get to know your family and friends. Throughout all of this, though, we really want you to remember that, hey, clearly we think GSA is a wonderful program but we are not the be all end all. We do not get to determine whether you are a good artist or whether you have a future in the arts. GSA application process is competitive. Uh, we'll maybe see as many as 1,200 to 1,400 applications for our 512 spots, uh, but don't let that hold you back. We hope you'll apply because you believe that you deserve an opportunity like this one. If ultimately you aren't accepted into the program, our hope is that you feel proud of putting yourself out there and that you feel more determined and prepared for other opportunities. You are an artist and no one, including GSA, can take that away from you. So if at any time throughout the application process, you start to feel a little self-doubt creeping in, maybe having second thoughts or feeling down about yourself, we hope you'll remember these next few things. And we do mean these things. You are enough, you are important, you are an artist, and your potential is limitless. These are truths. You are enough, you are important, you are an artist, and your potential is limitless. No one can take that away from you. All right, so remember, we're here for you. We love chatting with you during the application process and beyond. So please reach out to us with any kinds of questions at 502-566-5192. That's our GSA helpline, or you can email us at gsainfo at kentuckyperformingarts.org. Got our Facebook and uh, Instagram handles up there. And again, no scary adults at GSA waiting to judge you. <laughs> uh, we, we love helping you out. It's our job to help you out. Uh, and we uh, look forward to hearing from you. So that's it for our virtual info session today. Uh, you're armed with this great information. And you're well on your way to uh, being the best GSA applicant you can be. So we hope you'll keep in touch. Uh, we wish you good luck. And as we say at GSA, go forth and make great art. Um, so with that, we'll move into our Q&A um, portion of the webinar, and I know we have been um, answering some questions as we've gone along. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to, to Jess and Dean real quick, um, just to let us know if there's any um, questions that were asked that we feel like are worth sharing with the group or if there's any other lingering questions. And while we do that, if you have any questions, now's your time to put them in the Q&A feature. So we'll give you just a minute or two to do that.
Jess or Dean, were there any questions that were asked that you feel like we should share with the group or do you feel like they were all answered in there and, and pretty good? Um, I think one great question that we had is um, how will you be notified if you're qualified for the final round? Um, I think that's a great question and you'll be, we'll message you through get accepted through the messaging system. So be on the lookout for that. Yeah. Um, February. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, there is a messaging uh, messaging um, feature within Accepted. So we also email um, applicants about a week before that finalist announcement, just to say, here's when you're going to find out the information and how. So um, we will definitely be communicative with you all about what to expect for those announcements. There was also just another um, good question that we had answered. Uh, just as a general blanket for anyone, um, we had a question if the dorms were um, disability accessible. And um, if you do have any disability related uh, needs or accommodation request, um, you do have the opportunity to put that in your application. And GSA will work with UK uh, to make sure that we can meet uh, the students' needs. Thanks, Dean. Um, and I see we have a, a great question here about scholarships. Um, there are upward of uh, nearly 30 colleges and universities that offer scholarships um, uh, targeted to GSA alumni. Now, those scholarships are offered by the colleges themselves and not GSA. So it's the college saying, hey, we recognize by you going through a program like GSA, you're the type of student we want to recruit. One way we're going to recruit you is through this scholarship. Those range everywhere from maybe a couple thousand dollars to full tuition. Um, some of them do have eligibility requirements attached to them like ACT scores or GPAs. Um, so all of that is set by the schools. If, if, if we had our way, you'd all get full tuition, no questions asked just for going to GSA. Um, but some of the colleges do have some other um, uh, eligibility requirements in there. And if you go to our website, and Dean, I don't know if maybe you're able to drop the, the link to the scholarship page in the chat, um, sure. but uh, we do have those scholarships listed on the alumni section of our website, so you can check those out. But questions about those, always good to go straight to the college, just to make sure you're getting the right information. Uh, just to emphasize a couple um, uh, uh, pieces of information about the uh, application pool, we usually see somewhere between 1,200 to 1,400 applicants. Um, and this year we're able to accept 512 students to the program, up to 512, which is twice as many as we were able to accept um, prior to last year. So that's really exciting. Never been a better time to be a GSA alum. Um, Gabrielle, I see your question about the visual art por arts portfolio, what that's supposed to look like. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to direct you to go look at the visual art applicant guide on our website. Um, and the reason I'm going to do that is not because I don't want to talk to you about it, but just because it's the best way um, to get that specific information. So you're going to see there's uh, a few different types of artwork that we're looking for. You get to choose what some of the pieces are, but go to our website, look for that applicant guide for visual art and it's going to spell it all out for you very clearly. And that, that will also address uh, the question about whether or not you have to make more art pieces for the second round. Um, out of the people who apply for in the first session, how many make it to the second? So I think what this person's asking is how many people tend to advance to that final round. Um, that is a number not set in stone, uh, partially just because we don't really know how many applicants we'll have until January 9th. I will say, generally speaking, um, we've seen six to seven hundred something applications advance to that final round most years. Um, so that number can be a variable. Take that with a grain of salt. Um, but usually we're going to see about six to seven hundred ish um, finalists in that final round. And I love this question. What are some trends you see in the most successful applicants and alumni? Are there noteworthy habits or tendencies um, displayed that you think could be beneficial to those applying? I think this might be a great question to to close us out for the evening. Um, and what are you looking for in an applicant? Great, great follow-up question to that. Um, so I'll say a couple things in response to this. Uh, and first, I'm gonna just direct you to a resource, a couple resources. First off, in that applicant guide, this can be um, longer documents. Take note of the criteria. Those are things that you're being scored on and take note of, note of those tips sections. Um, those tips are, again, put together by adjudicators. So you might find some hints in there about um, the types of folks we're looking for, or maybe parts of your, of your personality um, or your artwork to emphasize in, in your application. And remember, we're looking for um, holistic artists here. We're not just interested in the art you're making. We're interested in who you are, what your passions are, why you make art, 
and um, uh, you know what you want to do with your art. So keep that in the forefront of your mind as well. Uh, another resource I'm going to point you to are the art form specific webinars that we did where you, let's say you're a dance applicant, you can go um, here from our, the, one of the people reviewing our dance applications about the type of applicants that we're looking for. Uh, and again, I don't score the applications, they do. So uh, that's just a great resource for you um, to look at. And again, this art form specific webinars are linked from our website. That said, I will say, generally speaking, having worked with GSA for a number of years and having been involved in a lot of um, application processes, um, there is truly no, no secret sauce, no secret recipe, um, no one way to be a, a, a successful GSA uh, applicant. What I think maybe is the best, most common through line to, to offer you all is just be yourself and be authentic in the application process. Your essay responses are a great opportunity to be authentic and not just tell us what we what you think we want to hear, um, because what we want to hear is what you think. Um, so uh, just be yourself uh, and and find comfort in just showing us who you are as an artist, and um, don't don't show us um, maybe some version of you that you think um, we want to see. Uh, remember, we're not looking for people who are figuring out how to solve world peace through art. We're just looking for. Um, young artists in Kentucky and what they're passionate about. So just be yourself and be authentic and let us learn something about you in the application process. Justine, anything you all want to add to that? That was pretty much, I mean, spot on. I was also going to um, direct any interested students to the art form specific webinars because um, for uh, the three that I sat in on um, in those, that was one consistent through line that uh, each faculty member or adjudicator tried to remind the applicants is you're unique and your art is special to you and nobody else applying to GSA has the vision that you do. That is so special to you. And that's what they wanna see. Um, and just to reemphasize what Nick said, you know, it does, you don't have to be the most eloquent and have a perfect speech, you know, you're, you're not, you know, auditioning for Mr. Mr. Kentucky or Team Kentucky. Like, we just want to get to know you and why you love to do what it is you do. And that's create art and be an artist. So just remember what makes you special, which is already your art. And just talk about your passion and you'll shine through. Yeah, I agree with Dean. He could, I couldn't say it any better than what Dean just did. <laughs> Yeah, and, and something that uh, our, our visual art adjudicator, uh, Gaddy, says sometimes that I think is really helpful way to think about it is, remember, we are looking to build a community, and a community consists of many different parts. So, um, it, you know, if you feel like, oh, I may not do something X, Y, the way that other people do, or maybe, um, you know, I'm comfortable drawing, but like, man, I'm not sure about painting or sculpture. Find comfort in that, because we are not looking for people who are good at everything. Um, uh, we're not looking for uh, people who don't have ways to learn and grow because that's what we do at GSA. So um, there may be uh, strengths that you have that other folks don't. There may be things that are not your wheelhouse and that's cool too because we want you to come and learn from other folks maybe who have more experience in that. So um, just know that uh, that's part of why we look for how you are uniquely you um, because we're going to be not just hoping that you learn as uniquely you but that also you offer yourself and like your perspective and what you bring to the table to others. So that's why it's important that we get to know you is because uh, we want to see um, what you contribute to the community. So um, well, thank you all so much for your time today. It's really great having uh, you all here. It's great to see so much of Kentucky represented. We love that. Um, yes. And again, um, please don't let today be the only time uh, we connect with you. Reach out with your questions. Um, uh, again, get those applications started early um get them submitted early and if you haven't read your applicant guide go do it right now you know you can you can take a few minutes just to go to look at the applicant guide um justine anything else you all would like to add we're we're just so excited we're excited to get to know you get to see your artwork um we are kentucky artists ourselves and we just love to support you guys and we are here for you. You have our email address. You have our phone number here at the office. Uh, it is our job to help you, and we love to help you. So if you're like me and you have those random questions that pop in your head at 2 a.m., it's very easy to just send an email right then. 
so you know that it's out of your mind and you'll just be waiting for an answer. And when we get it in the morning, we'll get back to you. So um, we do say sometimes, you know, we uh, sometimes allow up to 48 hours for a response, maybe as we get closer to the deadline approaching, but we will get back to you and we are here for you. And we are wishing you the best of luck and can't wait to see all of your fabulous work. Yes, yes. We can't wait to see your applications come over the next month and review your work. Um, you all are so inspiring. Um, we love uh, uh, watching your performances and, and your um, your artwork and your writing. So um, thank you all. Uh, keep making art. Keep being you. You are important. You are artists. And we look forward to uh, talking to you again soon. Take care. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.